Welcome to Future Talk. On today's program, we're going to talk about online entrepreneurship and how to start your own online business. My guest is Mufi Gadiali, who has built several successful online businesses. He has 17 years of experience in consumer marketing and technology, including international experience. He's a product manager at Lab126, which is a subsidiary of Amazon.com, and he's an adjunct professor at Stanford who teaches internet entrepreneurship. Mufi, welcome to the program. Good to have you here today. Thank you, Marty. Excited to be here. So how did you get started in this whole field of internet entrepreneurship? Um, great question. So I have always been intrigued by how the internet has shaped us um, not just from a technology standpoint, but also from a society. So if you think about it, um, we are at a point in, in sort of the history of mankind where we can sit in our chairs and pretty much learn anything that we want without getting up from our chairs. Is that a healthy thing? Is too much sitting in your chair a good thing? That's, that's a great question. It's, it's not um, as long as you walk around and get some healthy exercise, I think it's great. Um, but the, the, the amount of information that's at our disposal is just phenomenal. Um, the real power now is how we take that information and put it to use. And to answer your question, uh, that's what I really tried to do with my uh, course here at Stanford was to take all of that knowledge and then channel it in, in a way that can efficiently make money and in turn simple ideas into profitable businesses. Well, making money is something that most people like to do. Uh, let's say that you want to start some kind of business, uh, you know, maybe your wife crochets potholders or something and you want to sell them or maybe you have something even more ambitious in mind. Uh, how do you go about creating a business around that online? Right, so um, what I've kind of distilled it down is into five steps of um, starting with understanding who your customer is and what they're looking for. So a simple tool to understand uh, customers, for, so going back to the example of uh, a, a business that's related to crochet, knitting, um, there are tools that are available from companies like Google where you can uh, search for keywords, and keywords are things that your customers are looking for. Uh, using those tools, within minutes, you can actually estimate how many customers there are uh, in the US, across the globe that are looking for something like this. You can determine if a market exists for your product. Absolutely. And so uh, the point is you can estimate a market within a matter of hours before you actually start building anything or investing huge amounts of money. So you want to make sure that a demand exists before you start investing. You want to be sure that somebody's going to buy your stuff if they can get easy access to it. Exactly. So that, not only that, but you can also look at um, how that demand is being met today. So a simple Google search with those exact same keywords will yield uh, a list of your potential competitors. And as you sort of look into each competitor, it, it, you can act, build a profile of what um, is serving this market's needs. And um, you can build uh, a good understanding of where the needs are not being met. So what I talked about in my, in my course was uh, finding gaps where uh, the existing market players are not meeting the customer's needs and then capitalizing on them. So basically you look for a need that's not being fulfilled. Exactly. Okay, and let's say you've decided that you can sell your product on the internet. Now you have to have a website, right? How do you go about getting your own website? Right. So um, when in the early days on the internet, it's about 20, 25 years ago, most websites were hand-coded and you, you needed specialized skills to set up a website. Now, there are open platforms called content management systems. A good example is WordPress or Drupal. Uh, these are open source, community-managed platforms that can build extremely complicated, scalable websites in a matter of hours. So, for instance, um, uh, and, and I'll give you an example, whitehouse.gov is built on Drupal, which can run highly scalable systems as well as small businesses. Uh, the beauty of this is all of these are free systems that can be downloaded and installed on, on any servers. And 
as sort of business businessmen without technology background you can find developers who can manage these sites for a few hundred dollars a month so there is some programming required you are going to probably need some help if you're not a programmer yourself and fortunately not because uh, there are so many uh, existing programmers available who are proficient in these types of platforms so wordpress or drupal and who can literally uh, implement a website for a few hundred dollars a month. They can design it to your specifications. Uh, they can uh, add certain features. So for example, if you're selling things online, you need a shopping cart, you need a payment engine. All of these are available as, as modules and developers who are experienced can actually plug them in um, in, in a matter of hours and get, the, get that functionality going. So they're basically software kits that, it's sort of like a company in a box it already has everything you need. It has the ability to take credit cards and everything you need to sell. Absolutely. Um, for instance, you can use uh, a very basic account from PayPal. That can be set up in a matter of um, you know, 15 minutes. And you can be accepting credit card transactions on your website within an hour. So um, the point of all of this is a lot of this stuff has been created. Uh, by, by either by third parties or by outsourced uh, communities. And so for business professionals, they can focus on uh, their value add, on their marketing, and less on technology. So this is a little bit like Amazon.com. You work uh, for a subsidiary of it. Like they basically replace the brick and mortar building and cut out all the overhead, and they do pretty much all of their selling online. Right. So for, for a small business, they can um, look at three things, either selling products online, so it's physical products, uh, which can be sourced in the US or outside. They can sell services, which is you know, basic services like copy editing, proof writing, conver format conversion, things like that. Or they can sell information, which is uh, online learning, online education. Um, all of these are highly scalable. And really, what a, a small business entrepreneur really uh, needs to focus on is how they're going to differentiate them themselves in the market. Scal how they're going to mark out market. Scalable, meaning that if suddenly your customer base jumps by a factor of 100, it's not that much trouble to uh, accommodate it. Exactly. So going back to your example of a brick and mortar, the capital investment in starting a brick and mortar business runs in the hundreds of thousands or sometimes in the millions of dollars. In an online business, the capital investment is extremely low because everything is virtual and it's scalable. So as you get more customers, you can just buy more server space, more computing horsepower, and you can outsource uh, to, to more developers and things like that. Uh, the other huge opportunity also is expanding globally. So if, if, if the service is compelling enough, it can be sold pretty much outside, outside the US in any country uh, that has that need. So expanding globally becomes uh, much, much more easier. And then the third aspect to it is uh, there are outsourced services for pretty much everything. So for instance, uh, you want to get uh, good web designing um, uh, w graphics, icons, logos, all of these things can be outsourced to, uh, to experts in their field. So you can outsource logo design to a, a, a graphics expert. You can outsource your website design to a web expert and leverage the, sort of the best of breed without actually having you know, physical employees and physical location. Now you've organized a few uh, online businesses yourself. What, what is an example of one of your businesses?